I love to receive holiday cards, but every year I've encountered the same problem. How can I display flat cards in a creative, attractive, and most importantly, non-damaging way? I didn't like the mess of poster putty or tape. Push pins left permanent holes. These old solutions were messy, frustrating, and really didn't work that well. Hi, I'm Kate Mudge, creator of Ribbits, a simple system for hanging items that you want to display but you don't want to damage. The system is comprised of three components, a ribbon, a double-ended elastic clip, and our unique two-piece magnet. The ribbon is packaged in five yard pieces and is available in a range of themes and colors. This length will wrap around a standard door or it can be cut to fit any cabinet. The double-ended elastic clip holds the ribbon snug to prevent sagging and is available in a variety of colors. The two-piece magnet comes in many styles to match the season, holiday, or event. The metal disc backing and the ultra-strong magnet sandwich your item securely in place, preventing it from falling down. The three components in the retail line are sold separately to appeal to creative shoppers who want to mix and match colors and options. The Ribbits display system is versatile, attractive, and non-damaging perfect for the winter holidays and ideal for year-round display of greeting cards, artwork, school announcements, and more. For more information, please visit our website at rib-its.com. Wrap it, clip it, love it. Ribbits! This is Michelle, owner of Pink and Main, coming to you from the hot and humid sunny south just outside Atlanta, Georgia. I want to thank you for joining us to the Stamp and Scrapbook Expo Stamp Techniques at Home Event. We have lots of presentations for you and we hope you have a good time and enjoy them. So sit back, relax, grab a drink, maybe a snack. Perhaps you'd like to craft and create along with us. It's up to you. We just hope you have a good time. Hi, this is Michelle with Pink and Main. I'm so excited to be here with you today for the Stamp and Scrapbook Expo at Home event. I want to thank them for having us. We're very honored to be a part of this and so happy for you to join in and get creative and crafty with us. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about stencils, about ink blending with stencils, it's become popular with card making, paper crafting, even in scrapbooking. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that today. We do have a discount code for pinkandmain.com. You can use the code at home. It's all lowercase, one word, A-T-H-O-M-E. You can use that code now through July 20th and receive 15% off your purchase on our website. So you want to head on over when you get a chance and check out what we have. We have quite a few stencils available at pinkandmain.com. This is one of our newer ones. I've just blended it out with a pink ink and it's kind of like an optical illusion, but it's this cool polka dot background. It's called warped because it just looks like they're warped a little bit to me, you know, to create this pattern. And all of our stencils are six by six in size. So they're a nice size for card making. So we have quite a few stencils, like I said, to choose from and create fun backgrounds and cards. One of our newer ones, it's another favorite of mine is called Meemaw's Roses. And Meemaw is my grandmother. Um, she actually lives right next door to us and she has these most beautiful rose bushes in her little front garden and they bloom every year and I've taken photos of them and I just wanted a stencil that just kind of reminded me of her beautiful rose bushes. So this is the stencil and 
what I've done with it on this, this brown craft paper is I've taken some Distress Oxide inks and I've blended the ink for the roses and like this pink and purple. And then I did kind of a teal and green for the leaf, leafy background. And I think it made the most gorgeous pattern. And I can't wait to make this into a card. Which brings me to my next thing. Sometimes when you're struggling with your creativity or you just sit down and you have so many supplies in front of you and go, I just don't know what I want to create, but I want to do something. Pull out your stencils and some ink pads and just create some backgrounds. Then you have a stash of backgrounds for when you need or feel like making cards. You can just pull from the background and go, oh, this is perfect. I need, say, a sympathy card. All I need now is sentiment, a few embellishments on here, and I've got a beautiful card ready to go. So just a little something to think about when, you know, sometimes we go, oh, where did my mojo go? I feel like doing something, but I just don't know what. Just get out and create some backgrounds. It's always a fun way to be creative without feeling the stress of having to get a project finished and you have something to go back to later. We also have some newer stencils, and this is a three stencil pack, and it's a layering stencil set. So I'll show you on the back here what this creates when you use all three layers, is you get this really fun hibiscus flower and leaf background. So you, see, you can create some fun tropical or summer themed cards with this uh, layered stencil pack. So you get three stencils, and when you use them all together, you get that kind of background. And you can always just use the leaves by themselves if you just want a leafy background. So lots of fun there. So I have a stencil here taped to a card base because I just wanted to go over just a quick stenciling demo for you. This is our Petite Petals stencil, and it just creates a fun little repetitive, almost geograph geographic, geometric pattern. So that's fun. Our original ergonomic blender brush, the bristles are not quite, but almost two inches across. They're super compact, tons of bristles here that are so super smooth and soft. It's completely flat, so it's going to be really easy to blend to the paper with that flat surface. You can hold this brush. The handle is right on top of the bristles, so that's where you want all the control anyway. So you can hold this in practically any way that feels comfortable in your hand. You can put the handle in between your fingers like this. You can hold just the top of the brush. You can, you can hold the bigger piece where the bristles come out of. So there's a variety of ways to hold it, whether you have arthritis or carpal tunnel. I think this brush makes it so much easier to blend inked paper. So I hope you'll check out these brushes. Uh, they've been really popular since we came out with them in January. And so I just want to show you a little bit how they work. So I just have um, just a premium dye ink pad here in like a lime green color. And I'm just going to kind of tap and brush my brush across the ink pad to pick up some color. And I'm just going to go directly down and you can do circular motions or you can kind of brush it back and forth whatever you find easiest but we're just going to apply the brush with the ink over the surface and you can see we've got nice green ink coverage there I'm just going to get a little bit more of that ink on the brush Again, brushing it across. And let's do a little bit more down here. 
you see, I, so, I sometimes go back and forth. I sometimes go in circular motions. It's really whatever you're comfortable with, whatever um, seems to work with you, but it is really simple to lay down smooth ink blending color to the paper with this brush. Now I wanna switch colors. So I'm going to take one of our microfiber cloths and I'm just going to kind of scrub the ink off of the brush, any of the excess ink that might be on there from our green color. And I'll just do that for a few seconds to get that off. And this is a dry cloth, it's not wet. You wanna do it, if you're gonna keep using the brush and go color to color, you wanna do it uh, with everything being dry. You don't wanna introduce anything too wet um, until you're ready to actually do a really deeper cleaning to the brush. So now I've got a teal, a teal colored ink pad and we're going to just again tap and rub the brush across the ink pad, pick up some color and then we'll go right down to our surface again and blend that color onto the paper and the stencil. I'm gonna get a little bit more of that color so I can finish off the top of this card. And you can see it's just, it's really simple and easy. I'm gonna go over that green just a little bit so I blend those colors together. And now that I've done with this, I'm gonna wipe the brush off again on the microfiber cloth. Just get any excess ink off of there. You can see it's getting a little bit of that blue color off on the microfiber cloth. So you just do it until it brushes out clean and you can test it on like a scratch piece of paper if you want to. And then you're ready to go to your next color. It did, it will stain the bristles just a little bit, but after you use it a couple times and before the next time you use it, you may want to gently clean it with a mild soap and water and um, just kind of clean some of that ink off of there and let it dry thoroughly until you, you use it the next time. So let's do a little reveal here. I also use my microfiber cloth on my stencil. I'll just take it and wipe that ink right off the stencil and it will be clean again for next time. I'll remove this, this tape. And here we have a beautiful ink blended background that is ready to be made into a card. I can set this aside for later or if I'm feeling like it, I can add a sentiment, maybe a stamped image, um, some pretty florals on here would be nice, but I have this background ready in just a few minutes and I can finish up a card with it. But look how the ink blending just from color to color is so nice and smooth that green going into the blue and vice versa is just really nice and smooth. So this is our original ergonomic blender brush. The bristles are about, the bristles are about two inches in diameter. So you have a nice broad base for creating like bigger backgrounds, like the one we just created where you just wanna blend a couple of colors. But I wanted to give you something where you could have a little bit more detail control. So I'm introducing for the 
first time. You are the first people to see this. I'm very excited, and I hope you're excited too. This is our mini ergonomic blender brush, and isn't it the cutest little thing you've ever seen? So we'll hold them up together here to show you the difference in size. We've got a two inch diameter here. We've got a one inch diameter here. So you're gonna be able to get, you know, some more detailed blending done with this one. Again, it comes in a it's nice little caddy. So it sits on your desk. The inky surface is not going to get onto your desk or anything that's on your desk. You can keep it in the little caddy. You can toss it in your bag and take it to your next creative event. But it's the same ergonomic handle that you can hold in different ways. But you've got a one inch brush diameter and it is the same bristles, the same super soft, very flat surface blending bristles in a one inch brush. So you're gonna be able to get a little bit more control with the smaller or detailed blending that you wanna do. So you guys are the very first to see this. It's not available quite yet. We are releasing this on July 20th. So mark it down in your calendar or wherever you keep up with uh, things that you wanna remember. You'll want to definitely check this out on July 20th at pinkandmain.com. And remember, we have the code, the discount code, at home, all lowercase a-t-h-o-m-e, that you can use through the 20th on our website to get the blender brushes, stencils, and then we also have tons of stamps and dies and paper pads and some embellishments also that you can check out. I wanted to talk briefly about some other stencils that we have at Pink and Main, and that's our Masket stencils. So our Masket stencils are stencils that give you a masked opening for your cards. They are etched around the edge. It's a little hard to see on the camera, but they do have etching to tell you where to put your A2 size card so that the masked area or open area here is in the middle of the card. So they're etched for a four and a quarter by five and a half card. But of course you can put the, this one is the heart, mask it heart stencil. You can put that heart wherever you want on the card, but we have it etched so it's easy to find the center point if you wanna put it in the center. So in our mask it stencils, we have the heart, we have an oval, we have a hexagon, and you also get the negative piece. So you could tape or stick this down on your card and you can stencil an ink blend around it so you get like a nice focal point there that's just white or the color of your card. We have a square, we have a circle, and we have a rectangle. So here I've taken my card and I've put down that mask it stencil with the heart and I've blended some teal and blue ink in the heart. And I just wanted to show that it's the perfect focal point to add like your stamped image or a sentiment. It's just a nice spot to anchor something to. You can also use it alone, just add a little sentiment, blend some different colors. They're just a really nice a stencil to give you a highlighted area for the focal point of your card. So I'll show you this card here. And we've taken our Lucky Gnomes stamp set. Look at that guy, isn't he cute? And the sentiment goes along with it. But first, before we added him, we stenciled with the rectangle. We put the rectangle mask it stencil over this panel and we blended a light green ink. While that stencil was still in place, we took our clover stencil and we laid it on top, and then we blended a darker green through that so that you still have 
the rectangle stencil mask it stencil behind it to keep that rectangle shape but you put the clover stencil over it and you can stencil the clovers in that same rectangle shape so there's lots of versatility and variety that you can get and use with these mask it stencils so we just use the sentiment here lucky to call you a friend and like i said it's just a nice anchor point for the other parts of your card whether it be a stamped image or a sentiment one other thing um, to do with ink blending and this is without using stencils is i created a full sheet of paper and i just ink blended over the whole thing so imagine a whole sheet of paper just has an ombre effect of all these colors that I blended together, the pink, the purple, the blue, and the green. I just blended all of those together with my brushes and my ink pads. And then I used our, this is our fancy floral cover die. Our dies are pink, so you can always find them on your craft table. But this is our fancy floral cover die. And I thought, wouldn't that be gorgeous? Just cut out with that ink blended background. So instead of being just one solid color, you have this ombre effect or this rainbow effect of colors with this die cut. So that makes a beautiful card that all it needs now is a sentiment, maybe a few little sequins or embellishments or rhinestones put on it, and you have a beautiful card done. Remember that we have a discount code that's good through July 20th at pinkandmain.com. It's at home, A-T-H-O-M-E, all one word, all lowercase. You'll just enter that at checkout and that will give you 15% off of your purchase. So thanks again for joining me today at this at home event. We're so excited to be here. We hope that you've had fun as well. And until next time, keep living the creative life. Hi, Florette here with Ink on 3. Thanks so much for joining me here today. Super excited to be at the Stamp and Scrapbook Expo Stamp and Technique virtual event. We're going to do all kinds of fun stamping. We're going to learn all kinds of new techniques using Ink on 3 products. I'm going to show you a little bit around the website. We're going to make a card. So stick around. We'll have some fun. And I'll chat with you on the end as well. And I'll be chatting with you live too. So let's get our ink on. For today's project, we're going to use the Atelier Artist Grade Fusion Inks along with our three essential inks. And we're going to start with the watercolor reinkers. And this is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to use the Koi Pond stamp set. It's a really great stamp set because it's super easy to color and also very easy to learn how to no line color with. So the first ink I'm going to show you is the fade out no line coloring ink and we're going to do some easy easy no line coloring. I also want to talk a little bit about paper. I'm going to show you my favorite paper to watercolor with and do a lot of mixed media and it's the Strathmore mixed media paper and it has a vellum surface. I really like it because it works great for watercoloring, it's great for blending, and it's great for stamping. So it kind of takes some of the thought process out of trying to figure out which paper to use. Another thing to remember is if you are doing watercoloring, you do want to make sure to have a paper that will move and, and take water very well. Otherwise, you're going to struggle a little more. That's what's so great about this paper is you can use it for so many different things. Here you can see I put a drop of each watercolor reinker onto my tile and look at how easily I am no line watercoloring over those koi. So you can see the fade out ink is letting me just go right over all the details because what the ink does 
the fade out ink is going to grab the color that I put on top and it's going to keep the details of the image as well. So all those little scales, you're going to have the orange scales, you're going to have yellow scales, you're going to have green scales, blue scales, purple scales. It really is magical and easy. So you can see I'm really coloring it effortlessly. I don't have to worry about sections drying and that sort of thing. So it really opens up no line coloring for everyone. And these koi fish are one of the easiest places to start. So I'm just doing a simple rainbow color on all the fish. You can see I'm putting a little My Jam Purple next to the Peacock Blue. All the colors were designed to blend beautifully together, taking all of the hard work out of trying to figure out what colors you can use together. I also wanted to mention that the Fade Out ink, it's named Fade Out, but it doesn't fade completely away. What it does is it absorbs the color. So even if you were to let this dry overnight, it's not gonna disappear. You're still gonna be able to color that image. You're gonna be able to see those lines. And also, depending on your lighting, you can stamp it once, you can stamp it multiple times, and the formulation is gonna work and do all of the things no matter how many times you stamp it. So you really can adjust it for your comfort level. And isn't it so cool to see now, we started out with the fade out color, which is a completely neutral color. And the other amazing thing is, we can use it with warm colors and cool colors, as you're seeing here, but the lines are going to become the color we lay on top. It's not gonna contaminate the color we put on top. You will no longer see the actual fade out ink. It's going to become the red, the yellow, the orange. It truly is a magical ink and one of a kind. And I'm gonna show you another technique after this that's really fun too, that's different from no line coloring, but a really cool technique. I'll also notice that I'm able to continue to blend the Atelier inks. So if you have any like harsh water lines, if you use too much water in an area, you can even let that dry, come back later with a damp brush and blend that out. Also, when you're watercoloring, a lot of people have trouble or they're afraid of it, but one of the biggest problems most people have is they use too much water. So you wanna look at your brush to have just a damp brush. It shouldn't be dripping with water. It should just be barely damp. And then the the paints will move around, the, the inks will move around. I say paints because these paint like paint. They're buttery smooth, even though they're in ink. So when you go to a crop or when you go to any kind of crafting event, you can take these with you and you can do all the things. It's really easy and really fun. And I know I keep saying that, but I really enjoy playing with these inks. It really is a lot of fun. And I, I love trying new techniques and experimenting with them. Look at those fish though. Aren't those so pretty? Look at that. They look like an artist painted them. It, it no longer looks like a stamped image. And I think you'll amaze your friends too with that. Atelier is also very forgiving. So you can just continue to work it over and over until you get it how you want it. And if you wanna add darker shades, let it dry just a little bit and then add another layer on top. We're mainly doing one layer on these koi and, and really that's all they need. But if you wanted to get more detailed with it and put a lot of depth and dimension, you could just continue to add color on top of color because the inks actually layer beautifully as well. So they're semi-opaque, which makes it really great for layering and other techniques. So you can use it in so many different ways. And also I wanted to say, I know I've mentioned that they're forgiving, but you can see here, I actually went outside the lines a little bit. I was able to put a little bit of water down, grab my ink off cloth and dab it off because the inks are also water reactive. So what does water reactive let you do? You can actually lift color. So you can actually make cool backgrounds with it too which we're gonna do now. So this was the other technique I wanted to share with you with the fade out no line coloring ink. If you wanna kinda of get used to how it works, here I just took a stamping block and a bunch of little tiny cute little stamps. I put them on there in a little arrangement and then stamped the atelier all over this piece of cardstock. Now you can see a little bit of the color here, but I do have very bright lights. 
And here I'm just filling in some of the extra spots on there. And now we're going to see how the magic happens with even blending over the fade out no line coloring ink. I'm going to start blending right over the fade out no line coloring ink with the Atelier inks. I'm going to start with some Marilyn Red and I'm going to go in rainbow order. I wanted a really light color to these so I used a blending brush. If you want a brighter more vibrant color from the Atelier inks you'll want to use a dauber and that's what's really cool is I can get so many variations of color with the Atelier and as we go along when you see the koi fish with all the different um, inks you're going to see the variation come alive. So here you can also see this is some magic with the fade out ink. Now at the top you'll see those little stamped images where I blended the Maryland red those little images are becoming red, orange, yellow, and then we've got the goddess green and the peacock blue. Isn't that amazing? And then you'll see a little later too. And here's where I show how it's water reactive. So I'm simply dropping some water onto my card. I'm going to take the ink off cloth and look at that. I lifted all the color. And if you put had other colors underneath, those would show through. So you can keep layering, layering and make all kinds of really fun backgrounds. But I also want to show I'm going to put a little liquid pixie dust on there. I'm going to sprinkle it on and it's giving us a little bit more dimension and I just love to add some liquid pixie dust onto every card I make and look at what that does. I wish it would show up better in camera. I put an ink off cloth on and kind of flattened them out so they dry a little faster but look how shimmery that is. Oh there you can see it a little bit and look at that. Gorgeous and that was so easy. Now we're going to move on to another technique. We're going to do a little embossing with the same koi using the Juicy Watermark Embossing Ink. And this ink is so great because it is juicy like the name. So it's really, really wet ink. It stays wet for a long time, so it's perfect for embossing. But it has a very firm pad. And what that does is it's really fantastic for detailed images. So these koi are perfect for this. So I just took an anti-static pad and rubbed that on my paper. I'm stamping down the koi. And one pass is going to do it because this ink is so juicy, even with all that detail. And you can see I did stamped it one time. I'm going to pull it up. You can see a little bit here as I move it around. But as soon as I put the embossing powder on there, it's going to come alive. So I'm going to grab a piece of cardstock and I'm going to put our ultra fine embossing powder onto these koi. And it is very ultra fine. And it, when you heat set it, it's very smooth, so it's really fantastic for detailed images. And what you'll notice as we're going along, and this one is called Gold Rush, that all of our products were designed to pair beautifully together. So it really makes crafting a lot easier. And I'm a crafter just like you. So if I love it, that's the only way we continue in development on a product. Um, that's why I spent two years making the Atelier because I kept saying, nope, we got to send it back to the chemist because it's not quite right yet. So when you get an Ink on 3 product, you know that a lot of thought and a lot of development and a lot of time went into it before we put it to market. Oh my gosh, look at that gold. I am always amazed by embossing. It's like magic. I love watching it. Now we're going to take some of the Atelier inks from the watercolor inkers and we're going to paint it onto the embossed koi and it's a lot faster and a lot easier and it can give a very different look so it's really fun that's what's great about our three essential inks is you can literally do all the different things with the three essential base inks along with the atelier and you'll notice when I watercolor, I always have an ink off cloth right by me. And what I use that for is sometimes to wipe off some of the color. I also use it to make sure my brush is not soaking wet. And it's really great cloth because it's very, very high quality microfiber. It has very deep teeth. And the other thing, it's purple. And what's great about the purple is even as it gets all inked up, it always looks awesome. But look at the koi. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to show them all to you finished in just a bit. I'm going to show you our blackout detail ink. Great for sentiments, Copic friendly, waterproof, and it dries instantly to the touch. So you're going to be less likely to smear anything. 
And I'm a messy crafter, and that's why I developed Blackout, because I wanted an ink that dried really fast that I could use with everything. It even is permanent on glass when you heat set it. Remember when I said how we make sure all of our products pair beautifully together? Well, one of the important things when you use Fade Out is you want to make sure you have a clean stamp. So we have an amazing stamp cleaner. It's called Ink Off, and it comes in a pad, so it's super convenient, easy to travel with, of course, when we can travel again. Um, but you just wipe it off with your ink off cloth, you wipe off your ink, then you dab the ink off pad, and then you're gonna take your ink off cloth and wipe that off. But look, even before I wipe it off again with the ink off cloth, it's already clean. Really easy, you're gonna, you can clean your blocks with it, you can clean your stamping positioner with it, you can clean everything. And as far as the, um, ink off cloth. I actually have one that I use to clean my glasses and everything. I love that cloth so much. But the ink off cleaner is really amazing. You're going to be looking for stamps to clean. One thing I forgot to mention, it comes with a white pad. It will get discolored as you use it, but it will continue to keep working. So here I'm just showing you real quick all the different Koi in all the three essential inks. So here we have the fade out no line coloring ink with the atelier and then I put some liquid pixie dust on top. Didn't those turn out beautifully? And then I did the same coloring technique but this with the blackout ink. I stamped the koi then I just took the atelier inks and blended them right over and here I'm showing you how you can use Copic markers with them as well. And here is the juicy embossing ink with the gold ultra fine embossing powder. Isn't that so elegant? So pretty, I just love it. And you can see all the different looks and all the different things we can do. And so that's why we have the three essential inks. They're really the base inks to do all the things that you wanna do in stamping. This is stamping technique, so I wanna squeeze a few more techniques in. So I'm gonna use a stencil for this next technique and it's gonna be really cool. So I took my cardstock and I'm just lining it up in the corner and I'm gonna tape it down onto my, the back of my stencil. The reason I'm lining it up in the corner is because after I put the paste on, I'm gonna remove it. I'm gonna put my stencil in a bucket of water or in the sink or wash it off so the paste doesn't dry on the stencil because you wanna get that off before it dries so it's a lot easier to remove. The stencils are great because they're really high quality and you can wash them really easily. So I just take it and I smooth the paste down really nicely and then put the extra back into my container. And now I'm gonna peel it off, but because I put it in the corner, once this is dry, and you're gonna see me line it up again, so I lined it up after it's dry, I'm gonna retape it down, and now we're going to ink blend over the paste and this is going to be so cool. So the reason we line it up is we want to keep those nice white lines under there and then we're going to have the really pretty colored of colors of the atelier on top. Isn't that so cool? I can't wait to show you this. And I'm also going to take liquid pixie dust and I don't even have to wait for the atelier to dry. I'm just going to put liquid pixie dust over the top of that so that this textured paste when it's all done when I lift this up we're gonna have this beautiful rainbow texture and it's glittery isn't that amazing the other thing you'll notice is look how soft and pretty it is and through this whole video this whole live I've used the same colored inks. So you'll see the koi, they're very vibrant on the blackout ink, the way I painted them on. They're a lighter color, the way I painted them on to the fade out. So we're getting so many different looks. I'm gonna show you how I assemble this card. Now this card is so beautiful and I have to give a big shout out to creative team member, Ilda. And you can check her out on our blog. There's a picture and if you click on there, you can see more of her work. I loved her card so much. I wanted to remake it for you. Mine is slightly different, but it's really almost identical to hers. I just didn't have the same gold twine in that, but this card I just thought was so elegant. I couldn't wait to make it, and I couldn't wait to share it with you. So I just took a little vellum, put it on top of that textured paste piece that we did, then I cut a little piece of cardstock and I heat embossed the word friend, um, hey friend on there. And then I took a little of this gold thread and wrapped it under the koi. And I think that kind of looks like it's like a water ripple. 
and then I just trim it with some scissors to cut off the extra and um, you can go to our blog as well and see another version of this same card. I think this card is so elegant and the hay and the friend come from two other stamp sets that are really fantastic. The hay comes from our hay gorgeous stamp set that has a gorgeous lady with a big floppy hat and she's really fun to color as well. The friend comes from our heels to you stamp set that has a gorgeous high heel um, kind of a pun on words or play on words and it has a beautiful flower too so that's another great stamp set to play with but isn't this beautiful I'm also going to show you what I did with the other koi I made two other cards and this one I used the background where we blended right over the autumn fade out ink and got those cool images and this is the other one with the blackout ink and I'll probably do some videos on our YouTube channel showing how I created the other two cards so you can see those step by step and how I assembled them and put them all together. So we have one card with the no line coloring, one card with embossing and stenciling and another card with the blackout ink and I also use the stencil on that one as well. Now a little bit about our website and then I'll be back to chat with you right after that. There's a lot of great information here as well as tutorials and all of that and there's categories at the top and at the bottom right you can send me a message and ask me a question directly from the website. What's great about the website is there's so much information you can see our new releases, all the different inks, reinkers, as well as our digital products like our 3D paper projects that you can download and cut on your digital die cutting machines. We have digital papers and free digital files so you can give them a try and we're always adding new ones as well. If you love crafty videos, we have an awesome YouTube channel free to you with all kinds of tutorials, step-by-step -step instructions, as well as an Instagram page with more inspiration and creativity. So you can always find something fun to look at. We also have a blog that has step-by-step -step instructions if you prefer blogging. Um, you can see here we have all kinds of guest designers as well as our creative team. So there's so much fun and inspiration on our sites. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. I had a great time and I hope you enjoyed all these tips, tricks, and techniques and we'll give them a try. And check out our social media. We've got so much information. We have so many how-to videos. And even on the website, you can go and you'll find all kinds of great information, uh, how-tos, card examples. Check out our blog, Instagram, whatever your favorite social media is. We do, we are on almost all the platforms. So thank you so much again. Oh, and don't forget to check out the sale for the show. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. It's Emily coming to you from Heartfelt Creations. It's great to be back with you. If you and I have not met, welcome. Today we're gonna to share some of our top tips using some flower shaping, stamping, and we'll end it by putting it on a card. This is a glimpse at what you and I will be creating together. So with this, you'll be using the Sweet Peony Stamp and Die Set. Um, you'll see that this is a pretty dimensional, beautiful flower, and we'll end it up with doing some background stamping, adding a decorative die, and all that fun stuff. So with this, we're going to have um, the flower first, and I'll show you how I stamp that, and then we'll do some coloring and shape that. So if you have not done this before, let me know um, what you like about this. I'm going to start off by using the Magnes Blue ink. Um, and we're using the Large Sweet Peony Stamp and Die Set. Um, in this set, you have two of the largest sizes. Now, if you're like me and many crafters from all around the globe, um, you'll want both the large and small Sweet Peony um, if you wanna have all the sizes of the flowers and the leaves. So with this, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go ahead and 
ink up these flowers. Now, most of these flowers come with multiples connected, so you can easily stamp them at one time. Um, I love this Magnes Blue, but what I really like about the stamping that I'm doing today is I'm doing a, a multi-colored variations. Um, so you can just go ahead, you can stamp those, and then you can go ahead and color them. Now, I typically go ahead and die cut this out um, like you see on these, and then I'll add a little bit of color around the edges. Now, I added just a small touch of the Magnes Blue around the edges, and then we're gonna shape them and we'll add some more color to get the variations that you see on this beautiful flower here. So that's what we're gonna really focus on today. So with this, when you go to shape them, I'm doing kind of a two-step shaping today. Um, if you haven't used our flower shaping molds yet, this is what does it for you. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention is the paper that I did stamp on is our deluxe flower shaping paper. If you don't have that paper, it is a 100-pound cardstock, and it makes that when you shape with the paper, it really holds its shape, and um, it's really stiff. And once it dries, after you've misted the water on top, um, it will really hold itself very well. Um, it doesn't break very easily, which is a very nice um, added benefit with that. So with this, you have that shaping mold. You just put the lid on, and then you put it through your machine. If you haven't used these before and you're like, wait a minute, I really want to learn how to use that, um, or if it goes through my machine, we have, if you go to the website at heartfeltcreations.us, you're going to see the mold section under the shop category and you can get the mold compatibility list there to see if your machine works with this as well so that comes out this is the basics shaping mold um, if you go to our website and you just type in the name of the stamp die or mold i'm using that will bring it right up for you um, so that is the mold that i'm using today um, so when that comes out this one is what we call our basics mold which gives you a nice crinkle look which is great um, and you could totally leave it just like that but what i really wanted to do is show you how you can take that to the next level by adding just a little bit more depth and dimension in the petals so with what we just completed that gives you that basic and then you can go back and you can do some more shaping to that if you like. So all you have to do is you can take, um, this is what we call the golf tool um, shaping. Um, if you type in golf tool into the search box on our website, or we'll also add the links to the products in the comments. Uh, but I am using the second largest size. You can just go back and you can just pull down in those petal tips just a little bit. Um, I personally like to bend the molding mat in half, or you can always you know, maybe purchase two mats if you like a thicker pillow so you have more dimension. Now this is a flower where you can really, um, I don't know, like it's super versatile. What I meant by this is like, you can get a lot of different looks and lots of different dimensions. So you'll just press down in the middle. So if you want something super dimensional, you'll just press down a little bit harder. So that is the basics of what I did to shape these flowers. So this is using, for the largest flower, I used the two largest sizes of the large sweet peony, and then I used the second largest size, and that's how we got those all together. Um, so once you're finished doing that, what I wanted to show you is how I added extra cuddle color, not cuddles, <laughs> to these flower tips. Um, now you can use a variety of colors for the blue one with the Magnes Blue, I used the cactus flower, which is kind of a pinkish undertone, a little bit of purplish in there. And I just went back and I went over those petal tips and I added a little bit of that pink in there. I did it afterwards so that I could kind of highlight those creases and crinkles a little bit more. Um, so it's totally up to you if you want to do a little bit of a multicolored flower if you wanted to. Um, in the flowers that I'm using today for the card, I used a mixture of flowers. Um, so anytime I combine these for the largest one, I did the two largest ones and then the second size. And then I graduated to the small sweet peony set and I used a combination of these florals. Um, so when you go to the smaller sizes, you can do two of one size, one, and then for these, I just did two together of the same size, and the smallest one, I just did one layer. So these flowers, the pink, I did in Vibrant Fuchsia, 
And then I also tinged the edges a little bit with the Vibrant Fuchsia as well to get that bright pop of color. So if you do a mixture of color, it adds a little bit more of a depth and dimension into your flower shaping. So our next step is just going to be uh, putting the flower together. So if you haven't done this before, you're going to just pop in the center. Um, I like to make a pretty large hole. Again, I'm using the uh, golf shaping tools. Um, that has the ability to has a paper piercer on one end so you can kind of poke it all the way through and that will give you the beauty of a large hole that you can really add a beautiful flower stamen very easily. Now the stamens that I'm using today come from two different sets. I like to kind of mix and match. If you haven't used the stamens yet, these are super stunning. I use the rose hip stamens. These are pretty large. And then I also use the assorted pearl stamens and these are really tiny. Um, the assorted pearl small is also what I used for the smaller flowers in this set too. Now, if you um, have seen these and you're like, oh my goodness, I love these, but I don't have them yet, we have a special savings today for you, and that is you get a free stamp set with a purchase. So with your purchase, you get a free stamp set. Just enter that into the cart with your purchase and enter code 342138 and you'll get that one completely free and that expires on July 18th. So make sure you take advantage of that before that expires. So when you go to put these through, you'll use those stamens, you'll pull that through the smallest flower first and then just go right through the center. I personally like to have a really beautiful cluster of those. Um, now, if you are doing this flower and you want less dimension, you can always adjust the dimension based on how you like. So this is a flower that honestly, you have you can do so much, so much versatility with it. Um, so you can kind of hold this a little bit. If you want more dimension, kind of just kind of hold it up so that um, that glue bonds and kind of sticks. And you can always pull the stamens around a little bit if you want to have it scattered a little bit more around the entire circle. And then you can go to your next size. Um, so this is the largest size. Um, and then we'll just pull those stamens through. So tell me what you're loving about this. Have you used the Sweet Peony yet? This is what I call one of our classic basic flowers. It's a flower that's very versatile and you can use for all occasions. So the, whether you want something that's super elegant and, and dimensional, um, like you can see on this card, um, this is really built up in the center, but then you also have the small ones on the side that are less dimensional. Um, so you can do th these types of dimensions with any size that you prefer. So we'll go back and add the third layer. Isn't that beautiful? I just love how these turn out. So we'll go ahead and add that glue to the base. I like to use the hot glue um, because that really bonds very quickly and it makes that I can continue with my flowers very um, fast. So I don't really have to wait on that to dry, but you can choose which flowers you wanna use. Isn't that beautiful? Now, our next step, once you've built and assembled all those beautiful flowers, is you wanna put it on a card, or you could also, you can cluster as many or as little as you want. Now, this one, I did the full card. I'm going to layer this together um, in, I'll tell you kind of, okay, you could stop here. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to make our card base. So to make the card base, I used um, a couple different, uh, let's see here. Um, I used the Elegant Pocket Accents die. This is a beautiful die where I used this piece. It's a layering die. Um, and that's what I used for the card base. So. I took this piece along with this piece to cut out the white border, and then I used the outline piece to cut out this one, and then to add the shape to the actual card base, all you need to do is, you can cut this card to whatever size you want. This is a five by five, you could do the six by six, you could do an A2 size card, um, but with this one, um, I lay this on my, card base and then when I went to put this through the machine the way I laid these plates down so it didn't cut all the way through on the top is I just laid the plate so it only covered the part of my die that I wanted to have cut through which was exactly like this ran it through my machine and when that came out that cut that card base so it's still attached 
Isn't that cool? I love how that turns out. So before we glue anything down, we're gonna do a little bit of background stamping. Do you like background stamping? It's kind of a fast way to pretty much do your own background paper very easily. So I use the Peony Bud and Blossom set, and I use this large, beautiful flower right here. So the main area that we're going to see is this corner and this corner. So I went ahead and inked that up with a Vibrant Fuchsia. One mistake I made today is when I stamp, I like to have a, a stamp foam mat underneath my stamping surface to get a good stamped impression every time, and I forgot that. Um, so that is something I highly recommend um, if you put down, um, if you don't have one and you'd like to have a really good one, I just type in stamp mat pad into our search box and that will pop that up for you. Um, so you have that beautiful floral. If you wanted to have a second generation stamped, um, you could also, this is the uh, Vibrant Fuchsia ink, but you could also do that so it's a little bit lighter if you want more of a pastel background. Um, or you could always do a, um, you know, multiple colors as well, which is kind of fun. So again, if you uh, have a stamp set you see that you would love but you don't have yet, um, you get one for free with a purchase. Um, just enter code 342138 and enter the stamp that you want for free and that expires on July 18th. So once you're finished doing this, you're ready to add this piece. So again, this is the Elegant Pocket Accents die. And any of the items that I'm using, if you're like, wait a minute, where does that come from? Um, I'll add the link below in the comments and you can also ask me a specific question if you're like, oh my goodness, I don't see something. Um, just ask away and we'll get those questions answered for you. Um, I am using a glue that I love to use for intricate dyes, also for glittering, but um, this has a very fine tip and it's industrial strength. So once it's dry, it adheres very beautifully and you can get the glue exactly where you're wanting it. So we'll just pair this together and then you can go ahead and just glue this right to your card base. And then you're ready to assemble your flowers. See how pretty that is? Um, I will go ahead and just enter um, a pattern paper on the inside. This is from our butterfly collection. Love this paper collection, I have used it so much. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and I always like to put the largest flower down first. Now, if you wanted to, you could always start with a smaller flower too, totally up to you depending on what you wanna do. Um, but if you're using this size, I pop that one down first and I've just added a layer of the glue. For leaves, we have a couple different leaves that are great. The Sweet Peony comes with some. Personally, I typically have leaves that are already done and created, so I can just grab from them. And I wanted to use the Calla Lily leaves along with some other classic leaves that we had. So those are the leaves that I'm using today. The Calla Lily leaves come with a mold that shapes it like what you see here, which is absolutely stunning. It does an, an incredible um, shaping to that, so you get incredible detail that would be really, really hard to get with hand, by hand. Um, so you'll continue that, and you'll just layer these. Um, if you're not confident with just placing these in and layering them yourself, you could always lay it out, take a picture, and then you can take it off again and layer it in however you like. Um, so you can do whatever you are comfortable with. Um, and then you just finish it off with the rest of the flowers and leaves. Um, sometimes I'll pop a couple flowers in and then some leaves and then just kind of continue that process until everything is completed. Um, so you can do as many flowers or as little flowers as you like. Um, you could stop right here um, with this amount of flowers. You might want to add you know, another pink one in there. Uh, I typically like to end with an odd amount, so like five. I like to do like five or seven. Um, so we might just pop this one in and then we'll add a couple more leaves in there just to finish that off. So um, the leaves, if you are looking for leaves and you don't have some, we have some beautiful ones that I think you'll love. You can just type some the word leaf in our search box and that'll bring a different varieties that we have. We have a very classic leaf um, that has lots of different styles in it that I like for all occasions, which is what I'm using right now. Um, but you might see some more styles that you really love. Um, so we'll just continue. I just kind of pull them apart and add them as I like. And then I just kind of go from there um, until I feel like it's finished. And then um, I typically, 
If I don't know who I'm going to give the card to, I will just leave the sentiment off until I know. Um, and then you can go back, you can glitter that, you can add some beautiful detail to it. So you can see a little bit of the difference between these two, just based on how I cluster those flowers together. Um, so that is the basics to using this the um, Sweet Peony, the quick and easy way. So hopefully this was helpful to inspire you to create some beautiful one-of-a-kind projects. Before I go, I wanted to share a couple more samples and just show you again the products I used. So the Small Sweet Peony Stamp and Die Set. Then I also used the Large Sweet Peony Stamp and Die Set. And again, just remember when you make a purchase, um, you qualify for a free stamp set. Enter code 342138 and that expires on July 18th. Um, I used the Elegant Pocket Accents for the bottom of the card flap and then the Shaping Mold, which is really beautiful with a lot of the basic flowers that we have. If you love background stamping, uh, this one is a beautiful add-on for the peony. Um, so before I go, let's look at some samples. And um, this is the one I had showed a little bit earlier, so you can see some beautiful ways to create with this one. Um, here's another one. If you like something that's super simple, not to, super dimensional, this is a stunning color combination. I think you'll absolutely love trying something like that out be based on your personal taste. Um, here's another one. I love how this one turned out with this full peony flower there. Um, and then here's another one just with some basic, like kind of classic um, with that gold frame, which is really pretty too. So hopefully this inspires you to create some of your one of a kind um, peonies. And if you don't have that one yet, make sure to get yours. Um, you get a free stamp set. Just enter this code um, when you are shopping at heartfeltcreations.us and do that by July 18th and you'll get that one completely free. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. We'll see you next time. Bye. Hey friends, it's Emily with Heartfelt Creations. I hope you've had an amazing time here at the Stamp Technique event. Hopefully this has inspired your creativity and taken it to the next level. Thank you so much for joining today. Um, we'll see you next time. Bye. Hi, I'm Kate Mudge, creator of Ribbits, a simple system for hanging items you want to display but you don't want to damage. Ribbits features three components, a ribbon, a double-ended clip, and our unique two-piece magnets. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to install Ribbits on a kitchen cabinet. The only tool you'll need is a pair of scissors. First, attach the double-ended clip to the ribbon. You may need to fold the ribbon a couple times to get a good grip on the material. Next, wrap the ribbon around the cabinet. Carefully attach the other end of the clip to the ribbon approximately where you want to cut. Cut the ribbon short enough to be taut without being too short. Remember to leave enough length to fold into the clip. As my dad always says, measure twice, cut once. The clip can be positioned inside the cabinet or over the top for a pop of color. Now that your ribbon is in place, remove a two-piece magnet from the package. Position the item to be displayed in front of the ribbon. Put your magnet in front in the metal disc backing behind the ribbon. The magnet will grab it, securing it in place. Here's a smart tip. Store unused magnets on the ribbon to prevent them from clumping together in your junk drawer or keep them in the plastic packaging for storage. Ribbits is easy to install, attractive, and won't cause damage to your cabinets or displayed piece. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit our website at rib-its.com. Wrap it, clip it, love it. Ribbits.